happy, happy Sunday, everyone. We hope that everyone is having a blessed day wherever you are watching today. And welcome to Feast at Home. It's the first Sunday of the month, and yep, you know what month it is. This means that Christmas is just right around the corner. You know, we all have a lot of things to say about this season, on how it's the season of love, of sharing, and of hope. But what I personally hold on to, brothers and sisters, is that this season is the season of giving. And more than just giving gifts, exchanging cards, I believe the reason why this season is truly in our hearts is because God gave us the greatest gift. More than just His Son, He gave us life, He gave us love, He gave us hope in the most unlikeliest of forms. And we just want to thank Him for that as we invite you to prayer and worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for the greatest gift that we received. Thank you for your life, love, and hope. We pray right now that you help us be good stewards of these gifts so that we may give it all back to you tenfold and share to others the life you have bestowed, the love you freely gave, and the hope that you'd be with us again very soon. This we pray in Jesus' name.
receive this life by your cross I've been set free you are everything you are enough for me you're all Lord, we continue to lift our eyes to you, where all life, love, and hope comes from. We continue to praise you and declare that whatever comes our way, pandemic and all, you'll always be fighting, working, and moving for us. You've always held us in your arms, and you will never let us down.
can't stop the rain from falling each time the sky decides to cry can't stop the sun from shining till the day turns into night and all over the world they try to steal a joy but her spirit can't be broken every man and woman girl or boy can't stop the joy can't stop the reason christmas lives inside of us from season to season can't stop the pain of all the hatred in the world there will be no hate no war in god will trust and peace on earth cause you can't stop christmas there's a feeling we share didn't know it but it always was there for united we will stand brother to brother hand in hand with one song one dream one prayer let your voice be heard for his blessing surround us all across the world can't stop the joy can't stop the reason christmas lives inside of us from season to season can't stop the pain of all the hatred in the world there'll be no hate no war in god will trust and peace on earth because you can't stop christmas who reach out for those in need for that magic of christmas is to give and to believe can't stop the joy can't stop the reason christmas lives inside of us from season to season can't stop the pain of all the hatred in the world there'll be no hate no war in god will trust and peace on earth can't stop the joy can't stop the reason jesus lives inside of us he's the reason for this season can't stop the pain of all the hatred in the world there'll be no hate no war in god will trust and peace on earth because you can't stop christmas because you can't stop christmas can't stop christmas and how many of you believe that despite how we feel despite what is happening around us or despite na hindi naman tayo magkakasama sa feast physically Christmas is not cancelled because Christmas is not about the gift we give or receive nor being together enjoying the food we're gonna prepare in the next what 14 or 13 days but because Christmas is about someone whom God sent us 2,000 years ago just to tell you just to tell me that his love is never cancelled. Kasi nga, kung may katabi ka, sabi mo rin sa katabi mo, God's love is not cancelled again this Christmas. And since Christmas is not cancelled again for the second year, even if we have uh, this pandemic still happening around us, this is the 
question of the day that I want to ask of you. If God will grant you any desire in your heart, ngayong darating na Kapaskuan, anong gift ang gusto mong ma-receive this Christmas? If God will grant you any desire of your heart, anong gift ang gusto mong ma-receive this Christmas? So nga, patingin nga nung mga nanonood sa atin. Tingnan ko yung mga sagot ninyo. But before that, I would like to say hi to all of you who are watching right now. Si Franz is here. Hi Franz, every week talaga napakasipag mo. Si Luz is here. Si Pas Ching, ayan, is here again. Si Teddy Cortesano. Hi Ted. Si Jay Katapang is here. Wow, happy to see you Jay. Ayan, may mga nagsabi na rito ng gusto nilang ma-receive. Uh, end of COVID-19, sabi ni Ted. Ayan, sana matapos na talaga itong COVID-19 na ito. No? At sabi ni Jay, more wisdom. Ayan, kailangan natin ng wisdom, di ba? Especially in the coming years that all of us are facing different challenges in life. Sino pa? Si Princess Ney present. <laughs> Ayan, anong present ang gusto mo ma-receive, Ney? Uh, i-type mo na para maibigay sa iyo na paghandaan ha, ng iyong uh, loved one. Si Melly. Hi Melly. Happy to see you. End of COVID-19. At syempre yung aking favorite wife. Ha? Sabi niya, continued protection. Yeah. And I would like to welcome also my sister. Hi Nani. Hi Mami. Si Sita Pangan, good health always. Ayan. Si Franz, maging masaya. Yeah. Ay, nako, importante yan. Ha? Maging masaya tayo sa buhay natin despite what is happening in your life. Yan ang magandang ipag-pray natin to have this joy of the Lord in our heart. Think season, healing for everyone. Yan, lalo na doon sa may mga sakit, no? Let's pray for them. Si Michelle, blessing of good health, protection, and generous provision. Yes. Gustong magka, magkasama ang pamilya, sabi ulit ni Franz. Si Ellen, ah, ganda ng ano ni Ellen. More time to serve God and a brand new car. Yan. Serve God and brand new car. So, bibigyan ka ni Lord ng car para makapag-serve ka ng gusto. Ayan, pwede. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good uh, prayer. Si JR. Hi, JR. Good morning. Happy to see you here again. Good health for everyone, sabi ni Ina. Sabi ni Luisa, for me and family to have deeper love for Jesus, abundance in all areas, continued protection, and good health. Yeah, Yan ang pinaka-importante, a good relationship with the Lord, no matter what happens in our lives. Hi, welcome, Ray. Namiss ko ang song mo. <laughs> ako din, eh, namiss ko na rin kumanta. No? Baka matagal-tagal ako di ko makanta. And uh, I, I tried it again no? because medyo nahihirapan akong kumanta this past months. And siguro naman na pultro ko. Ano? Sabi ni, Lor, ni Lori, everyone in the family is in good health and safe and protected from COVID. Thank you very much for your comments. Alam ko, all of us in this particular season, we have some dreams in our hearts. We have some prayers that we we want to have, especially in this coming Christmas. Alam niyo ako, what I want is this. I want to see all of you as early as possible this 2022. Lalo na medyo maluwag na yung protocols ng government natin. At, at hindi lang yan, open na rin yung mga sinihan and other venues where we can gather again. Kaya ako, excited na ako makita kay ulit on-site in wherever God will gonna bring us. Bakit? Because you know, as a preacher, I'm more blessed in our weekly talk kesa sa inyo. Sa totoo lang, mas, mas blessed ako. Kahit na sinasabi nyo lagi, Brother James, thank you very much because I was blessed uh, by your talk, no? by your preaching. Pero alam nyo, I'm, I'm doubly blessed. Why? Because whenever I give the talk, twice ko siyang naririnig si Lord. Una, when I prepare for the talk, kinakausap na niya ako. And second is when I actually give the talk. And I'm more blessed because 
not only I was able to hear God's word, but because I'm also a witness to what God has been doing in your lives through our feasts. Yung mga sineshare nyo sa akin of the victories, of the good things that God is doing in your life, it fuels my passion to serve Him more. That's, so that's why I'm so excited to see you again if God permits in our physical gathering. So I hope you are excited as well. Sige kung excited ka na magkita kita ulit tayo next year, pakitype mo nga dyan sa comment box mo, I'm excited. Kung excited ka lang, ha? I'm excited. <clears throat> now, I would like to welcome our first timer. Baka meron tayo mga ngayon lang nakapanood dito sa atin. If this is your first time, can you put in your comment box, I'm first timer here. Pakilagay nyo nga dyan. If you want, you can place your name so that we can know you. Because I believe that God brought you here and He wants you to be connected with a spiritual family. That's why He brought you here today. So, pakilagay mo yung pangalan mo if you're a first timer and allow us to connect with you. And I would like to invite you to our after feast party. After this talk, I want you to go into this Zoom and use this meeting ID so that we can welcome you formally in this spiritual family. And if you have anything you want us to pray for you, please do not hesitate to place your prayer intention in the comment box as well. Because our IM ministry is here, they're always welcoming your prayers. Now, I would like to welcome you to our 11 talk of our series, The Clash. Ang bilis, ano? And today, we're going to talk about this particular topic. Foolish versus wise. And today, I would like to preach on this simple message. Are you ready? While you're waiting, God is working. While you're waiting, God is working. And so let's pray our favorite prayer here in the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And together, let's declare God's presence and declare God's abundance. In this place as we pray today i receive all of god's love for me today I open myself to the unbounded limitless overflowing abundance of god's universe today I open myself to god's blessings healing and miracles today I open myself to god's word so that i become more like jesus every day today i proclaim that i'm god's beloved i'm god's servant i'm god's powerful champion and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's honor God's word. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Lord Jesus, speak to us today. I want to know you deeper. I want to have this personal relationship with you. Speak to my heart. I want to listen. Open my heart to your words today. And all this I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I give you the talk, allow me to exhort you in our giving. You know, last two or three days ago, I was able to watch this uh, Advent recollection of our diocese. And you know, I, I've heard this from, from our district builder. A, a new way of looking at the healing of Jesus. Kasi pag tinignan mo yung scripture, ang dami nating nakikita dyan that Jesus healed. Meron dyan si Bartimaeus, yung matagal ng bulag. And then he healed him. Tapos nakakita siya. And also this leper, the ten lepers, may mga ketong, pinagaling niya. And you know, the new way of looking at it, dati nakikita ko lang siya na parang Jesus healed someone. Pinagaling niya yung bulag. Pinagaling niya yung may ketong. 
But you know, one thing that I've learned new <laughs> in that particular story is that Jesus didn't just heal them, but He gave them hope. Binigyan niya ng pag-asa. Like yung bulag, binigyan niya ng pag-asa na ano, makita yung ganda ng buhay, makita yung ganda ng mundo, makita yung ganda ng mga tao. And the same way with the lepers. Kasi nabigyan sila ng pag-asa na ano yon na they can worship now God in the temple because before nakala- nakahiwalay sila eh. But now, because of this healing, they were given hope. At hindi na sila basta iniiwasan ng mga tao. Now why am I sharing this to you, friends? When you give here in the feast or in your church, you give hope to people. Why? Because here in the feast or in our church, we're able to bring Jesus to them. That's why when you give, you're giving hope to these people who need Jesus. That's why right now in your screen, makikita nyo where you can put your tithes or offering. We have BDO, we have East-West Bank accounts, credit card, we have also PayPal, and Gcash. And again, thank you very much in behalf of our district leadership for their continuous giving. That's uh, the beginning you were able to continue bringing Jesus and bringing hope to those people who are in need of Him. So again, maraming maraming salamat sa mga nagbibigay. Thank you very much. And lastly, if you haven't done this yet, can you please share this broadcast wherever you're watching from, whether you're watching from Facebook or YouTube. Pakishare nyo nga and pakilike itong ating broadcast today. So now let's dive in once again into the Gospel of Matthew. And we're nearing... the finish line in our study of this wonderful gospel. At sana may natututunan kayo every week that we gather. And today, tamang-tama yung reading natin since we are in the Advent season. At alam ko na alam nyo ang ibig sabihin ng Advent. Na? Alam nyo ba? Alam, alam ko alam nyo yan. Ha? Na ang ibig sabihin ng Advent, it is a Latin word for coming. Pagdating ni Jesus. And you know, I believe Jesus comes in three ways. First, Jesus comes every time. Every time. He comes to us at every moment of our life. We just need to open up our eyes to recognize Him. Nalala ko, meron ko isang kaibigan, nagdadasal siya, sabi niya, Lord, can you answer my prayer? Talaga bang kasama kita? Sabi niya, sige nga, kung talagang kasama kita, bakit yung mga baka hindi lumilipad? Why do cows do not fly? Sige nga, sagutin mo nga ako kung talagang nandyan ka. Sabang naglalakad siya, habang nakatingala siya, may umipot na ibon sa noo niya. At sabi niya, thank you Lord. Thank you. You answered my prayer. Biro mo ko lumilipad yung baka. Medyo malaki-laki yung plok na <laughs> papatak sa noo ko. <laughs> you know, God can speak to us in many ways through nature, through people, through situation in our lives because whether we believe it or not, He is always with us. And we believe this because this was the last word He said in the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew 28, and sabi dyan, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Hindi niya sinabing else time. Sige, I'll, I'll be with you sometimes or occasionally. I'll be with you. Or when you're a good boy or a good girl and behave accordingly to my expectation, I'll be with you. Hindi. Ano sabi niya? I am with you always. Ano ibig sabihin always? 24-7. Walang break, walang bakasyon, no exemption. In your good times, in your bad times, in your ordinary times, He meets you in your daily circumstances, in your joys, in your sorrows, in your mountain peaks, and in your lowest valley. And He also meets you especially in the phases of the poor, the abandoned, the sick, the dying, the imprisoned. And He also meets you in your prayer. Yes? I repeat, Jesus meets us every time. Sige, pakitype mo nga yan sa comment box mo. Jesus is with me always. Now, Secondly, He also come to us at the end 
times. Tayo mga Kristiyano, we believe in the second coming of Jesus. That Jesus Christ will come again. Hindi natin alam kung kailan. I do not know when and how. But in, we know that He will come again. Naalala nyo in the talk 10 of the series, ano sabi ni, ni Jesus in Matthew 24, Whoever, or sorry, however, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son Himself, only the Father knows. And like what I've said during that talk, on that last day, God will win over evil. And all creation will be restored in every dimension. Social man yan, cultural man yan, or personal, or cosmic. Because God is creating a new heaven and a new earth. And that day, every human that has ever lived on this planet will stand before King Jesus to receive His mercy if they choose to receive it. So that's the second way Jesus comes to us. And the third way is this. Jesus comes also in our in the end of our time sa katapusan ng buhay natin yes may katapusan ng buhay natin and when this day comes he will we will stand before Jesus and give an account for the life we live alam mo sa mundo natin makakuha ka ng mga abogado para mag-abogado sa para pagandahin yung story ng buhay mo and sa, sa mundo yan ganyan yan Pero sa langit, hindi. Sa mundo, you can get a lawyer para ilaban yung paano pagandahin yung buhay mo. Naalala ko tuloy, there's this story I've heard from one mass. Sabi nung, nung story, merong isang politiko lumapit dun sa, dun sa pari. Sabi niya, Father, kasi ano an, an, siya, ang tawag doon, eulogy. Sabi niya, can you say good things about my brother? Sabi niya, at gusto ko sana sabihin mo sa mga taong nakikinig na santo siya. At itong pare, hindi niya, hindi niya, ayaw niya magsinungaling dahil alam niya hindi santo yung Kilala niya yung taong yun eh. Sabi niya, pero pakisabi mo, Father, santo yung kapatid kong yan. At pag nasabi mo yan, Father, itong project natin sa parish, ako nang bahala. Sagot ko na yan. So si Father, naisip niya, sabi, sayang din, no? Kasi... Matatapos na yung project dito sa simbahan, maraming makikinabang. Kaya lang, ayoko magsinungaling eh. Walang nga itong taon to eh. So, during the eulogy, nakaisip siya ng paraan. So, habang nandun na siya, sabi niya sa mga tao, alam nyo, itong taong nasa harap natin ngayon, mandaraya yan, manluloko yan, babaero at higit sa lahat, hindi marunong makipagkapwa tao. Pero ito lang ang masasabi kung maganda sa kanya. Kumpara sa utol niya, santo yan. <laughs> so yun, medyo uh, natuloy yung project <laughs> ng simbahan. Again, sa harap ni God, ni Lord, walang abogado para paglaban ng ginawa mo or hindi mo ginawa sa mundong ito. That's why we need to be reminded of this truth. Na darating ang araw, mamamatay rin tayo. Kasi nga, kahit alam ko ang ayaw mo sabihin, sabihin mo nga kung may kasama ka ngayon, mamamatay ka rin. Mamamatay ka rin. Pero para medyo gumaan ng konti, sabi mo, pero hindi pa ngayon. Okay? But mamamatay ka rin. But you know, kung tagasanod ka ni Jesus, that statement doesn't have to scare you. Because where you follow Jesus doesn't matter. Earth or heaven, as long as you're following Jesus, we should not be scared. Which brings us to our reading for today. Haba no intro, no? Intro pa lang ho yan. In chapters 24 and 25 of Matthew, Jesus gave three parables about being ready for His return. And today, we're going to read the last one. Hindi natin aaralin yung unang dalawa, yung pinakadulo na lang. And this is found in Matthew 25, 1 to 13. And it says here, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra, extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. 
At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bride, bride, bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I do, I do not know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Alam nyo, noong una kong mabasa, nabasa ito, I have a hard time of understanding this story. Kasi iba yung wedding natin compared to the ancient Jewish people. Tama ba? Sa atin, ang, ang wedding, isang araw lang ang kasalan. Sa kanila, seven days for the wedding itself. Seven days. No wonder, merong isang wedding celebration na naubusan ng wine and Jesus had to do His first miracle in Cana. Kasi ang tagal ng wedding nila eh. Sa atin, isa lang yung ceremony. But in ancient Jewish wedding, dalawa. Number one is the betrothal or erusin. Ano yung betrothal? Ito yung, yung groom marries the bride in private who after the wedding will still remain in her father's house for at least one year. So, sikreto yung private yung marriage. So, that's erusin. And the second cere ceremony is nizuwin. Ito, this is a marriage consummation and celebration. Yung groom, he will take the bride from her father's house accompanied by the procession and consummates the union. At dito pumapasok yung ten bridesmaid. Yung sampung bridesmaid. Ito yung role nila. Number one, to welcome the bridegroom when he arrives at the bride's house. So nagaantay sila. Para pagdating ng bridegroom, they'll be the one to welcome him. Second role, to accompany the bridegroom and the bride as they journey towards the house of the bridegroom. So sila yung mag-accompany. At hindi lang yan, they will light the way of the couple and stay there until the end of the festivities or the lamp dies out. So sila yung mag-iilaw dun sa lalakaran nila. Now, bakit kailangan ng lamp and lamp oil? Now, mind you, this is not our normal lamp stand, ha? Yung panahon natin nga iba na. But this is like yung lumang alam natin ng, ng lamp. Yung tawag natin, sulo. Alam nyo ba yung sulo? It's a torch soaked in olive oil. And sa so makikita mo yan sa mga probinsya, yung sulo. Yan yung lamp na pinag-uusapan dito. Because the ancient Jewish we wedding feast takes place at nightfall. Kaya kailangan ng lamp or ng torch. And according to our reading, out of the ten women, five were wise enough to carry extra flask of oil. And we know what happened to the story. The groom got delayed. Na-delay yung groom. Now, in order for this parable to take root in us, because like what I've said before, parable serves as a mirror which helps us see ourselves in it. So I would like to share with you three lessons on this story. Three lessons. And here's the first lesson. Wait for God's perfect timing. Wait for God's perfect timing. You know, God doesn't always follow our schedule. He doesn't always follow our timing. Yes, there are times that when we pray, God answers immediately. Yung pag meron ka hiniling, hiniling sa kanya, nabibigay agad sa'yo. Like, like this guy, he was praying in the, in, in the chapel. Sabi niya, Lord, please give me 1,000 pesos para meron akong pang pamasaya at the same time para mabili ko ng gamot para kay mami. And then, maya maya, narinig siya, meron pala isang tao nandun sa likod niya. Isang pulis. Tapos, Sabi, narinig siya, sabi niya, kakaawa naman to. So, ginawa niya, 
Tiningnan niya wallet niya, nakita niya meron siyang 500. Sabi niya, pwede na to At least makatulong. So, inabot niya ron sa mama. Tapos pag-abot niya, sabi niya, Brad, pinabibigay ni Lord sa iyo. Tapos itong tao to nagdasal. Sabi niya, thank you Lord, thank you. Pero next time, huwag mo nang padaanin sa pulis. May kotong eh. <laughs> may abawasan. <laughs> Di ba may mga ganyan? If you look at your life, there are times when we pray and God answers it immediately. But many times, God is delayed. Or He is late, not according to His timing, but according to our expectation. And in this time of delay, waiting is crucial. Why? Because it expresses your trust in God. Yung pagtitiwala mo sa Kanya, dyan mo masasabit, mapapakita in the time of delay. But on the other hand, if you handle this delay in the wrong way, your impatience can lead you to all sorts of disasters. Naalala ko, I think I, I've already shared this with you. When I was still in Toyota, so I have this opportunity to buy a brand new Rebo. Medyo malaking, malaking sasakyan yan because medyo naglalaki na yung mga anak ko. So, gusto, gusto kong bumili ng Toyota Rebo na yan. Pang pamilya kasi. Kaya lang, meron kaming Toyota XE. Yung kotse. So, sabi ko, kailangan ko ibenta to so that I can buy this. Lalo na promo kasi I think mga December yata namin binili yan eh. So, sabi ko, promo, tamang-tama. So, bebenta ko tong XE ko. Ang pagkakamali ko, when, when we're selling the Toyota XE, pina-assume ko yung, yung utang ko sa banko because it's uh, a five-year term loan payment sa banko. nang hindi ko tinan hindi ko tinatransfer yung ownership dun sa taong kausap ko. Dahil nagmamadali ako eh. Kailangan ko mabili ng promo, kailangan ko mabenta to na mabilisan so that I can buy this new Toyota Rebo. And you know what happened? Isang buwan lang yata nakabayad yung tao. Pagdating ng second, third month, fourth month, nako na problema na ako. Sakit ng ulo ko. Bakit? Dalawin binabayaran ko sa sakin monthly. Buti na lang, God made a way for us to get the car and we were able to sell the Toyota XE 1.3 by transferring the ownership to the one who will buy it. You know, I could have gone through the long process of transferring the ownership sa umpisa pa lang. Pero hindi ko nagawa. Bakit? Nagmamadali. I know some of you, you could relate as well. Meron mga pagkakataon sa buhay mo dahil sa pagmamadali mo, mas lalo kang nagkakamali. And if you look at the Bible, there are people there who suffered as well when they handled the delay in a wrong way. Like nabaw, si King Saul. Si King Saul, he could not wait for the prophet Samuel to come. So anong ginawa niya? He took matters into his own hands and offered the sacrifice that only a prophet could do. So ano nangyari? He lost his crown and his anointing. He lost God's favor because he didn't know how to wait. And if you look at a few centuries before that, the Israelites can then they could not wait for Moses to come down from Mount Sinai, so they manufactured a golden calf to be their god. And many were punished that day. Friends, listen to me. Faith is important, but if there's something more important than faith, it is faithfulness. Faithfulness. Now here's my question to you. Have you ever experienced season of long waiting? Perhaps you've been waiting for your son's conversion, but so far nothing has happened. Or perhaps you've been praying for freedom from this death for two years now. So that dalawang taon ka nang ka na rin ninenervyos pag nakikita mo sa online si Brother Arun kasi naalala mo yung utang mo. Or perhaps you've been praying for healing, but the healing hasn't happened yet. Or right now you're waiting for your storm to end, the depression to lift, the problem to be solved, the need to be filled. Friends, here's my encouragement to you. Be faithful to God when He doesn't seem faithful. Bakit? You know, if you notice... Our story today, all ten brides, bridesmaids fell asleep. Sila na nakatulog. 
both the wise and the foolish. Parang gusto sabihin sa atin ni Matthew, it's normal to get tired. It's normal to feel discouraged. It's normal to doubt God. But hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. Because at the perfect time, God will come and your time of refreshing goes with Him. Yes? The time of your refreshing will come. Singa, kung may katabi ka, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, the time of your refreshing will come. So that's the first lesson. Now here's the second lesson. Naalala nyo, sabi ko kanina, that after the betrothal stage, the bride will remain in her father's house for at least one year. Isang taon, pagkatapos ng first stage of their marriage, may iwan yung asawa dun sa bahay nila. Bakit? But before answering that, here's a coinciding question na gusto kong tanongin sa inyo. Bakit late yung groom? Bakit late si groom? You know, the groom during the one-year period after the betrothal, iniiwan niya yung bago niyang asawa in her family's house in order for him to prepare their house and their livelihood. Yun yung nasa culture nila. Na bago mo kunin niyang asawa mo, ayusin mo muna yung bahay, ayusin mo muna yung livelihood niyo. Now, bakit late yung groom sa story natin? Akin lang ito ha? Akin lang ito. Nalala ko nung first time na si Jinky dadaling ko sa bahay namin sa Montenlupa. Alam ko, medyo excited siya during this time. Kasi alam niya, siya pa lang yung first girlfriend ko na dadalhin ko sa bahay namin. First girlfriend. Mm, may mga, mga naging girlfriend ako before her na hindi ko dinala sa bahay. And this is the first time na magdadala ako ng girlfriend sa bahay namin. So alam ko, excited si Jinky. Bakit? Kasi ang aga niyang dumating doon sa tagpuan namin sa sukat. <laughs> doon kami nakikita. Okay? Uh, parang nagdadabog yata sa kabilang kwarto. No? Sorry, hindi pala, hindi pala siya maaga. Late lang pala ako. Na-late pala ako kaya, kaya kala ko maaga siya. But you know, to my defense, ito yung dahilan ba't ako na-late? Dahil darating siya sa bahay, naglinis talaga ako ng bahay namin. Nilinis ko yung bahay. Yung gamit namin na nakakalat, tinaliguan ko. At yung lola ko na bedridden, tinago ko muna sa cabinet. Para, para balik tayo yata. Yung gamit namin nakakalat, tinago ko sa cabinet. At yung lola ko na bedridden, pinaliguan namin. Bakit? Because I want to make sure na pagdating ni Jinky sa bahay, she will enjoy every minute of her expected experience in meeting my family. Now, ano yung gusto ko sabihin? Friends, the groom is late because he's making sure that when he, when he takes home his bride, her experience will be beyond her expectation. So here's the second lesson. While you're waiting, God is working. Minsan pag tinignan mo yung mga sagot ni Lord sa panalangin mo, minsan delayed. Kasi maaring hindi ka pahanda. At alam naman natin na pag hindi ka pahanda, masasayang lang yung blessing sa'yo. Bakit baka itapon mo lang? Kasi hindi ka handa dun sa pagpapala. Ay ako, this is my suggestion to you. Do not rush things. Do not rush things. Ano ba, high school ka, huwag ka magmadaling maging college. Yung, may ibig sabihin, yung, huwag ka magmadali na gusto mo parang college ka na, na nagbo-boyfriend ka na agad. Or college ka, huwag kang magmadali na magkaroon ng asawa. Enjoy mo yung college life mo. Huwag kang magmadali mag-asawa. At kung may asawa ka, huwag kang magmadali maging byuda. <laughs> okay? So, do not rush things. Same with what you've been praying and dreaming for. Don't rush God in in answering it. Huwag mong madaliin ang Diyos na sagutin yung panalangin mo. Why? No. Let me answer that through this next story that is so deep in theology. Na, na, nangyari lang ito kahapon. Uh, well, I'm preparing for the talk. Sabi ko, grabe yung theology nito. 
alam niyo yung, yung mga alam niyo may aso namin di ba anim yan eh and every day ang pagkain niyan dalawang beses lang sa tanghali at sa gabi so sa gabi kanin or dog food pero sa tanghali mga around 11 o'clock ang pagkain niyan ay yung peras so binibila namin ng peras at tas yan yung kinakain niya at gustong gusto nung anim yan at pag sinabi kong eating time nako tatakbuhan na yan mga yan at lima sa kanila nandun sa paligid ko sa upuan so nakapaligid at minsan dalawa tatlo sa kanila dumadamba sa akin nagmamadali bakit kasi gustong gusto niyang matikman na yung peras pero alam mo itong itong isang asong ito yung tatay nila ang laging nakatanghod lang na medyo mal- malayo-layo sa akin Naka- nakatanghod lang nagaantay habang itong lima nagwawala sa paligid ko at alam mo pag kumain na sila, tatawagin ko yan, Sam! Tapos, eh, nalalapit na. Pukunin niya na yung pagkain niya, pupunta na siya dun sa lugar ko sa niya. Normally, kinakain yung pagkain niya. Grabe, no? Ang lalim. <laughs> Halos lahat sila, mga aso, nagmamadali. Maliban kay Sam Sam. Bakit? Kasi alam niya na kahit anong mangyari, hindi pwedeng hindi siya mabibigyan. Lalim, ano? <laughs> Friends, same with what you've been praying and dreaming for. Don't rush God in answering it. But believe that God will give it to you when He sees you are ready. So that when you receive it, you will enjoy every minute of it. Yes? Kasi nga, pakitype mo nga dyan sa chat box mo. Believe that while you're waiting, God is working. Which brings me now to the third lesson. And here's the third lesson. Ask God for extra oil. Alam mo, nung bata-bata pa ako, naturuan na ako ng mga magulang ko nila, Mami, kung paano magbigay at magparaya to share what you have to others. Like, alimbawa, pag sa school, pag kailangan magdala ng paper kasi merong exam, Magdadala ko hindi lang isa, kundi isang pad. Pinapabili ko isang pad. Bakit? Kasi para doon sa mga, mga klase kong walang paper, meron ako maibigay. O halimbawa, yung lapis. Tapos yung isang kaklase ko walang lapis. Puputulin ko yung lapis na yan. Tapos tatasahan ko yung, yung pin, pinagputulan. Tapos bibigay ko doon sa klase ko. Why? Kasi bata pa lang kami, naturuan na kami magbigay. O halimbawa, kumakain ako ng lollipop. Aalokin ka kaklase, gusto mo? <laughs> gusto mo? Tapos sasabihin ng mga klase ko, huwag na, huwag na, yakin naman, yung, yung chicken sandwich na lang, yung chicken sandwich na hawak mo. Ah, ito ba? Oh. Ah, ito, gusto mo? <laughs> Yun. Nagbibiro lang ako. Pero talagang bata pa lang kami, hindi, hindi mahirap sa aking mag-share sa iba. That's why, in our story today, medyo nagtataka ako, bakit nagdadamot yung five wise virgins? Are, are they really wise? Kasi kung wise sila, they should be sharing the extra oil they have in their flask. Tama? So that instead of just five lighting the way for the couple, there will be ten. And I'm sure mas masaya yung celebration kasi mas maraming ilaw. But you know, later on, I realized I got the message wrong. Because of these two realization. The first realization is this. The refusal of the wise virgins may sound selfish, but it is reasonable. Reasonable. Bakit? Because kung maubusan din sila ng ilaw, or I mean ng oil do sa lamp nila, what will happen? It will be an embarrassing scene for the couple. So, magiging madilim lalo yung lakaran nila. And it would be a bad omen for them. And here's the second reason. Because there are things we cannot share with others. May mga bagay na hindi mo pwedeng i-share sa iba. Yes, you can share a paper or a pencil, but I cannot share my lollipop. Di ba? Kailan ba ka sabihin mo sa inyo, pero Brother James, you can share a lollipop kasi may sa ROTZ, nagagawa, nagawa namin yan eh. Nung, nung yung candy, pinagpapasapasahan sa parang parang try, trial sa mga kadete. So, okay lang yan. You can share your lollipop 
So, mali ka dyan. O sige, ito na lang ha. Imaginein mo, if I borrow your toothbrush, will you lend it to me? Kasi nga, hiramin ko yung toothbrush mo. Papahiram mo ba sa akin? I doubt it. Kahit sabihin ko sa yung hindi ko ipang babrush ng teeth ko yan, dila lang. Promise. <laughs> Papahiram mo. O kahit sabihin ko sa hoy, may, yung saliva ko, huli yan. Gagaling ang gingivitis mo. Just allow me to use it. Malamang hindi mo pa rin ipahiram, right? Because some things are too personal. Neither can you share what the lamp and the oil symbolizes. Hindi mo pwedeng i-share ito sa iba. These two symbols that we're using in the story, the lamp and the oil. And what is the lamp symbolizes? Righteousness. Righteousness. Sabi sa Matthew 5, 15 to 16, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So righteousness, you cannot share that to others. Kanya-kanya tayo dyan. And how about the oil? What is the oil symbolizing? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Therefore, oil in this parable is the personal work of the Holy Spirit in your heart. And you cannot share that. You cannot share that. Now imagine, sabihin sa'yo ng doktor, um, Brad, you need a heart bypass operation. Kailangan mo ma-operahan. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, yung, alam mo, bigla ka nagkaroon ng aha moment, tapos ang ginawa mo, tinawagan mo yung kaibigan mo, at sabi mo sa kanya, pare, di ba naalala mo, malaki yung utang mo sa akin? Oo, pare. Gusto mo, wala utang mo? Oo naman. Sige, bayad na yung utang mo sa akin kung gagawin mo itong sasabihin ko sa'yo. Sige, pare talaga. Sige, gusto ko yan. Ikaw ang magpapa-opera ng puso para sa akin. Quits na tayo pag nagawa mo yan. Gagawin kaya na kaibigan mo yan? Or kahit gawin niya, will that bring help to you? Friends, hear this. Everyone has to go through the surgery of the Spirit. You got to lay down on the operating table and let the divine healer cut away toxins in your soul and repair anything that needs to be repaired. So that when Jesus comes, He will find you faithful in the midst of all the hardship, troubles, and difficulty happening around you. So here's my suggestion to you. Ask God to supply you with extra oil for your long journey. Ask Him for extra patience, extra perseverance, extra faithfulness, extra obedience. So that when He comes, in either of the three ways that Jesus might come to you, He will find you faithful. Yes? Now let me end with this last story. This happened to me two days ago. We have this attendee in Fee South Mall and he serves also in our GLM. And she's known to many of us as Mommy Cecil. Hindi niya alam ito but hindi ako nakapagpaalam sa kanya but I would like to share her story. I hope you will forgive me if you don't want me to share this. Hindi ako nakapagpaalam sa Mami Cecil. But this really brings home the point of what I would like to share with you today. Itong si Mami Cecil, since the time we started in Fee South Mall in 2016, kasama na natin siya. And you know, for me, she's the sweetest attendee and servant I know. Kasi itong sister natin ito, talagang may 
binibigay na gift. Yung, alam mo yun, may isang araw darating yan, bibigyan ako ng, ng sapatos. Uh, may mga binibigyan sa akin. May isang t-shirt. At hindi lang sa akin, even with Jinky and other leaders in FSM. Yung bibigyan niya yung isang leader natin, isang singer natin, tapos susuot niya dun sa stage. Tutuwan-tuwa siya. Yung ganyan, napaka mapagbigay. And one of the things na talagang gustong-gusto kong ginagawa niya, every Sunday morning, kahit na alam mo yan, minsan dadaan lang yan dahil may kailangan puntahan, hindi siya makatin ng feast. She will just visit the feast just to see me and hug me before giving my talk. Every Sunday. Walang palya yan. Talagang sabi niya, Brother James, pahag. Yung ganyan. So, nakakapin ako. And she's, she's so generous na two days ago, I received a message from her daughter na hinihingi yung address namin. Sabi ko, bakit? Because si mami, inutusan ako to send something to your daughter. Sabi niya si Pat kasi kakasal na. At naalala niya, malapit na yung kasal. Gusto niya padala yung regalo. So, pinadala yung kinuha yung address, binigay ko yung address. Then, nakam- nakamusta ko si Mami Cecil. Sabi ko, kamusta si Mami Cecil? Sabi niya, Brad, she's not doing well. Sabi ko, why? Sabi niya, she has stage 4 bone cancer. May cancer. So, dali-dali, tinawagan ko. Sabi ko sa kanya, can, can I call you? Video. So, nag-usap kami. At alam mo, ito palang cancer niya. Kasi kala ko, all, all the while, okay siya eh. Nung nag a siya sa atin sa feast, when she started attending, she already has this cancer. Si Jinky naman, alam niya, ang alam niya, magaling na siya eh. Okay na siya dun sa sakit niyang cancer before. She's a cancer survivor. But lo and behold, nasya kami. Because she's now suffering stage 4 bone cancer. Kaya nag-usap kami, nakigalang siya. And I see the pain in her. But you know, yung nag-uusap kami, hindi ko siya naringgan ng sama ng loob sa Diyos. Hindi niya sinisi si Lord sa na dinadaanan niya ngayon. Hindi niya sinabing, hindi ko siya naringgan na, bakit ganun? I'm, I'm a generous person. Bibigay ako ng ligaya sa iba, nagbibigay ako ng pag-asa sa iba by the, the things that I can do. Ba't mo ko pinabayaan? Wala akong narinig na ganun sa kanya. You know what I see in her? I see a face of hope and faith in God. Kasi after namin, nung habang nag-uusap kami, sabi niya, na mo, Brother James, I'll just, I do not accept this sickness. I was not, not accept, but I'm not claiming the sickness, but I'm offering it to God because I know that my life buhay ko galing sa kanya and he is in control of my life alam mo habang nag-uusap kami sabi ko grabe yung faith niya kay Lord her faith with God. But despite the pain, hindi niya sinisend Diyos. She keeps on worshiping and praying, praying the rosary, attending our feast at home, praying. Why? Because of the extra oil of God's Spirit working in her heart. Why am I sharing this to you, friends, in our lives? As we wait for God to come, kahit alin doon sa tatlong yan, all of us might 
experience what she experienced. Pero sana, maging katulad tayo ni Mami Cecil. That whatever it is that is happening in our lives, while we are waiting, we believe that God is still working. So let us pray. Let's come before God. And can you please pray for Mami Cecil as well in your own prayer time? But allow me to pray for, for all of us today. Lord Jesus, I know that one day you will come. Whether in the end time or in the end of my time, And all I ask is for that extra flask of oil that I may be able to stand firm in my faith in you. Stand firm as I follow you, especially when hardship is around me. Tulungan mo ako. Help me to be faithful to you in believing that beyond this the situations in my life while well, I am waiting you are working and so I pray for your Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of everyone listening to my voice right now fill them with your power So that in times of trouble, they will believe that you are working beside them. And this I pray, this I claim, in Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Let's continue to worship God and let the Holy Spirit complete the message of God for you today. I give my heart I give my soul I give my strength Lord take control With all my life, with all my breath, with all I am, I give my all, I give my heart, I give my soul, I give my strength.
been saved. I receive this life by your cross. I've been set free. You are everything. You are enough for me. You're all. I